So a quick video regarding uh, materials in Rhino and how they translate or don't translate into Unreal. Um, I have just two simple boxes here. Um, one has uh, an opening and the other one is uh, closed. Um, and if I go to the materials tab in my scene and I grab or create a um, color, uh, which is not just a layer color, it's actually like a, considered a paint material. And I come down um, to um, oops uh, to uh, this object, and I assign that color, which we can't see unless I go to rendered view. Um, you can see that I can obviously apply it to the entire object, but I want to apply it to one face. Well, um, it's may or may not be commonly known. Um, that if you hold Control and Shift, you can pick an individual face and assign a color to that face, um, even though it's still one poly surface, um, which is great. Uh, so that means that you could go and you know add these all up. Maybe we'll just leave that white. I could do that and right click and assign. And now I have multiple colors uh, still on the same poly group. Uh, sorry, poly surface. And so that would be great. Uh, that would that would be perfect if we could send that over to Unreal and have it stick. But the problem is it doesn't. Um, whenever you uh, export your Rhino file, whether you're planning to use DataSmith or FBX, um, it ultimately becomes a mesh. And what happens is during that mesh process, um, which we can look at here, um, it will uh, lose that multicolor feature. So you can see this is a mesh and this is a still the original poly surface. And so this is what we would end up with Unreal. And unfortunately, it seems to be kind of a unique thing to Rhino. Um, other programs don't seem to have this issue. So hopefully this will be resolved in Rhino 7. Um, who knows? But um, I just wanted to show a few things that allow you to kind of work around this. Um, so I'm going to go back into shaded mode uh, for a second, and I'm going to go up to Analog Tools, Options. I'm going to go down to View and go to Display Modes. I'm going to pick uh, Shaded and make a copy. Um, and when I do that, it gives me uh, all the options to tweak how the shaded mode actually appears. So instead of calling a copy of shaded, um, I'll just call it uh, better. And um, I've done this a few times, so um, I've kind of, for me, decided on what I like best. Um, the first thing I do is I go down to uh, where it says custom material for all objects, and uh, I change it to rendering material. This way I see the rendering materials in the shaded viewport. I don't have to hop over to the render view. Um, the other thing that I do is I look at backface settings and I switch this to single color for all backfaces. And I'll explain this um, when we uh, when we get back there. I'm going to pick kind of like a neutral, easy on the eyes sort of color. Um, it could be anything. Um, and uh, in fact, I think for demo purposes, I'm just going to choose to call the backfaces, which means they're going to become invisible. Um, so the last thing I do just for me is I like to change the ed edge thickness down to one. And now if I go up to my uh, options here and choose better, you'll see I get to see my materials. And if I look inside uh, this box, it other than the lines, it kind of looks invisible. Like it, you know, looks like there's nothing there. And so um, this is how Unreal sees um, uh, single-sided surfaces. So if you don't have a closed volume, if you don't have thickness, um, then um, it's going to uh, appear as invisible. Um, so we'll, we'll look at that in a second, too. So um, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and move this over uh, into Rhino. Um, but before I do that, the workaround to get these multicolors to appear um, is kind of going back to what I think everybody knows anyway, with one exception. So if you grab your object and you explode it, of course, now 
all the poly surfaces are, uh, or individual faces are separate, which effectively means that this box is not one object, it's six objects. So if I grab that, if I grab all of those faces and I go to uh, export selected and we switch to um, FBX and I've got a previous uh, model here that I'll just write over called colored box and I say okay to that, I say okay to that. I'll then hop over to Unreal and I will import this box just as I normally do. I'll just leave all this the same, hit import, and there you can see I've got my mess. I've got six faces that as long as I'm careful will come in and will have those separate materials showing up. Well, that's great and everything, but now I have like six different objects when I really just want one. Like, you know, again, I'm thinking that what if there's the possibility that you move something or lose track of something or you're trying to select through other things and so on and so on and it gets really annoying. So the workaround um, is to let's delete these and I'll delete these right here and then I'll import that again same exact file except this time what I want to do is open up this little uh, this down arrow right here to expose these settings and I want to check this box that says combine meshes so as soon as I do that and hit import now I got one box with the separate materials so I drag this out give this a second to update and then there is one object with multiple materials so um, I find that much more convenient when I want to uh, move um, things around or make adjustments inside of Unreal. Um, it's just it's just a better way to go. Now the downside to this is that if you have say your complex scene, right? You've got your one object here, you've got this object, um, you got this object, and you go and uh, do combine uh, just like we did. Like if I grab all of these and do save as uh, motion builder uh, and we call this colored box is we'll hop back and import using that same combined meshes option Here's the downside, is that now all of these are combined. Even though they're not touching, they're still combined. Now technically, you could, you could work with that. It's not really a problem um, other than you're never going to be able to break these apart. Inside of Unreal, there's no way to uncombine them. So if you have... Uh, a unique object that you know you want multiple materials to be on um, it's most likely going to be best to do export selected of that individual object um, and don't have it grouped or, or brought over with all of the other elements in your scene so it's still limiting but it's better than um, the alternatives now um, just to point out, it's a little side note, aside from material, you can see there is, there's no bottom on this box, and that's actually not true. If I hide this and I go down and I look under, there's the bottom, right? It's got all the sides. If I look at the top, that's where it becomes invisible, and that's because uh, meshes and really rhino surfaces, poly surfaces, any surface inside of a 3D modeling program is technically single-sided, meaning that it doesn't have um, an inside face unless it has thickness or volume. Uh, one thing that you can also do to identify uh, this is to type in DIR and pick an object and you will get um, the uh, uh, face normal arrows or the direction normal arrows of the object. And 
what you want to be looking for is that white arrow facing outward. Um, so if you click again, it'll alternate it. It'll flip it, basically. But if I was to uh, run that again, and I pick this object, you can see, same thing. If I click here um, and reverse that and say OK, now that face has been flipped. So you see it on the inside, but not on the outside. So um, when you're working in the normal sort of default mode of um, Rhino, double-sided shading is always turned on. So you don't ever really notice or pay attention necessarily to when, uh, when these um, surfaces are facing inward or outward. Right? This is the normal view. You always see both sides. Um, but it still follows that same rule that it can only, can only really show in one direction. Um, so even though double-sided shading is turned on, it still has a, uh, a direction. So this is why I tend to prefer uh, in my setup to have either the back faces culled so that I can't see them, or another alternative is in um, the options uh, settings. If you go to the custom uh, shading mode that you set up, rather than call back faces, you can just use a single color for all. And then that way it just tags the inside face uh, with, a, with the same color um, always. So you can see right here, I need to uh, flip that back and now we're good. So two things to just remember is uh, back faces inside of Rhino if you have um, single surfaces um, make sure you watch out for the direction um, and if you have objects where you want to apply multiple materials you will want to explode them and then upon uh, importing into Unreal you will want to uh, use the combine option inside the import settings that we just looked at. Um, the last option that I'll show um, can also work quite well um, and it's convenient on very simple objects but not convenient on complex objects. Um, requires a data smith and I think that it's worth showing so I'm gonna turn that plug on plug in on one more time because I don't have it on at the moment and we'll call this level four and we'll restart real fast Right, so now if I go back to level four, here's where we left off. And let's say that on this object, uh, or these groups of objects rather, I want these two faces to have a different color. Well, it's actually not too difficult as long as the object is quite simple. And in this case, it doesn't get much easier than this. So if I have this selected, I'm gonna come over here to the static mesh properties and double click on this static mesh option it's a little window and it brings me into the static mesh editor and uh, what I can do here is I can go to this tab right here that says mesh editing so you're on toolbar go to mesh editing click on edit mode I'm on selection type single and if I click and hold control and I click multiple triangle triangles then I can do assign material and it will apply a material slot or give me another material option on this grouping so now if I close this you can see when I click on this I have an empty material slot which means I could go to my materials and drag in uh, something to uh, to work there so this would be a very easy way to apply material to the inside of the wall in a house, like if you want to drywall there and stucco outside, that's one option that you could do. Um, since 
the group or the combine option uh, might be a problem for all of your individual walls. If you if you bring your house over with with that workflow, all the walls will become one. Um, so I'm going to follow up with this uh, workflow in class, um, but I just wanted to put this out there as a reminder um, to watch out for single sided surfaces and um, keep in mind the combine option when you're uh, exploding objects in Unreal uh, to preserve their independent uh, color tags or material tags.